Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend D.G. Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This, That, or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, or video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. At the end of this day, one shall stand, one shall fall. Hello everyone, welcome back. Well, not welcome back. Welcome to the first episode of the Energon Universe podcast, where we're going to be discussing uh, all the new uh, Energon Universe books, uh, Void Rivals, Transformers mostly, and uh, some G.I. Joe. I am Phil, joining me as always. Well, if you've listened to this feed, you know this man, because he's, a, well, if you've listened to a podcast uh, in the last six months, you probably know uh, <laughs> Justin the Owl. <laughs> That's right, transforming on all my way from Cybertron in exile. He's he's taken over the king of podcasting from Ray since he's addicted to the Marvel uh, Snap uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, straight from Kentucky, he married <laughs> newly married, and no, it is not one of his relatives. It is Russell. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, I don't know. Star Scream. No. Uh I am happy to be here. It's uh I don't get to talk about Transformers too often, so it's 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 a nice outlet. It is nice, and I think yes. the first time that all three of us talked together at the same time was for an episode about Transformers mm -hmm. when we covered uh, Megatron. Wow, probably on Tomes yeah. of Evil. Yeah, and that was about two years ago. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think that popped that, that memory popped ago. up on my Facebook though, like not too long ago. I was like, man, that was two years already. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, crazy. All right, I was gonna say. Besides the comics, if we wanted to, like, if I don't know if anyone gets any updates. I mean, if we see any new toys that we think look uh, impressive or anything, like, just like I get a, all the updates yeah. on that stuff. So. Like two weeks or <laughs> like two weeks or so ago, I got like the uh, the Ironhide and the Prowl. It's like I guess they're doing like a series on the uh, like the move from the movie. Oh yeah. Well, the well, yeah. the only good movie, the animated movie, but yeah, it's like band, <laughs> battle damaged Iron High, Iron Hide and Prow. They nice. also just announced a, a reissue of the original uh, Perceptor. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. no kidding! Wow. No. Telescoping action, not telescope. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Uh, all right, but uh, yeah. So, all right. I know you. I know Russell. You said you were gonna reread Void Rivals. Didn't get the chance you're going to. But uh, yeah, I figured I'd give us the, give everyone a real quick uh, brief uh, synopsis on uh, Void Rivals. Yeah, I even I didn't get a chance to read that either. So, yeah. yeah. Well, again, I mean, well, the first issue starts. It, it's like, uh, all right. There's these two. Uh, I don't want to say war warring races, but they're not on good terms. The uh, <clears throat> these two alien races. The Agorians and the Zertonians, uh, and they're both basically searching for like uh, natural resources. Like there's some like a like an icy comet flying by, and they're both all, both of them are just like, oh, if we get that, we'll have a bunch of water and stuff. So, mm. but uh, they each send out a delegate. They both crash on this uh, planet in an uncharted space, and then these two enemies have to kind of work together to try to get off the planet. And in the first issue, you know, as they're, like, trying to fix one of the ships, they're just like, oh, wait, we found this, like, really old, old, like, cruiser or something. And then they, like, get, pump enough power into it to, like, try to, like, check out the systems. It transforms into jet fire. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, oh, I think I've been out of commission for, like, uh, millions of years or whatever, you know, so... So it doesn't even like check on these two. It just like take, it basically takes off, and that's where he's coming from. When you know we'll get the Transformers number one, but that's where he comes from. His Void Rivals number one. So that's cool. Okay. I, I yeah. wondered if they had set that up. Um, yeah. So so when he's talking about it, he doesn't know about the war. It's like yeah, because he's been deactivated for he 
he, mm. he guesstimated it was like maybe millions of years. So, mm. okay. which is it was pretty much in line with his first appearance in the cartoon, right? I mean, he he came later, and he didn't really know what was happening, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They kind of did in the Marvel comics. Well, he was kind of. It was so weird in the Marvel comics. It was like some of the Transformers were built, and some of them were like. Cause I, yeah. Cause I, I kind of like sampled some of the IDW stuff. Which again, kids, if you you can jump into this stuff without having read any Marvel Transformers or IDW Transformers. But I know they kind of mm-hmm. got into it's like, oh, what kind of Transformer are you? Were you one who was like was uh, just like uh, if they were made or if they were just like I don't know, like grown out of Cybertron? It, it's it's mm. a, it was like a weird distinction and stuff, but. Again, you don't have to know any of that that stuff, kids. This is all fresh, right? Yeah, you had yeah, first record. issue was. A- I know Justin and I's friend Anne knows like nothing about Transformers, and she's picking this up, so she's completely fresh. So yeah, and this is a great jumping on point for new readers that oh, have yeah. no history with Transformers whatsoever, that only know of it tangentially through the cartoon or the movies oh, yeah. or anything right. like that. This is a great way for people to get into it, <laughs> and it, and it's so and it's good for older fans too, because like uh, I was talking to Will uh, on Friday night, we were recording, he picked it up too. He's like, "This is like the second or third time I picked up Transformers number one, and they just showed up for the first time." <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> They're just waking up again. Exactly. But uh yeah, yeah, but this Void Rivals, yeah, and then then in the second one they get off that planet that but then they get picked up at the end and uh looks like they're about to get captured by uh oh, what's his face? Skux Skuxoid. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then in the third issue they show that he had like a one of the it says it calls it a quintesson, but it's the guy it's the lizard looking guy with like the tentacle not the one with the not the ones with like the multi faces, but you know the one yeah. that's like a lizard. The little guy with yeah. the tentacles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. They, but they call yeah. but the Skuxoid calls him a quintesson too, because he's like cause yeah, like yeah. Uh, yeah, the characters from Void Rivals are like almost trying to help him escape, so he said he'll help them, but the guy uh Skuxoid's like, oh, I'll give you a, a working ship if you just like, you know leave this guy here. They're like, oh, okay. So they take mm-hmm. off, and then in issue four, Skuxoid takes the Quintas on to uh, Cybertron and runs into okay. our, our favorite One-Eyed Willie himself, Shockwave. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who's, is he running things on Cybertron? It's, uh, well, there's not much. Like that, the well, cartoon, Well, there's right? not, yeah, well, mm. it's kind of, but it seems like there's not much. He's only on, like, two or three pages. It's, like, I guess there's oh. not much to run, because, like... He's like, why would you bring this here? And, you know, Skuxoid's like, well, they're your enemies. I thought, I thought maybe I could trade you for a prisoner. And Shockwave's like, I have nothing to trade. He's like, I barely have enough Energon to keep myself running. He's like, most of my fellow Decepticons are like in uh, stasis. Oh, wow. So wow. it seems okay. like, so they really don't go into detail, but it seems like things are not going good on Cybertron. No. Yeah, because Shockwave's pretty much saying, yeah, I'm the only working Decept- Decepticon right now, so... It's like a barren wasteland. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So interesting. Yeah, that's. I mean, I. I don't want to spoil too much for you guys. I mean, there's. I mean, there's not a ton, but it's like. Yeah. See, like I said, I I make fun, but it seems like Kirkman wanted to write a new book, and it's just like, oh yeah, I'll throw in a Transformer or a Quintus on every issue just to weave it into this universe. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm happy that there's Quintessons in that. I'll yeah. definitely want to. I'll we'll definitely be more interested in reading it just for that fact alone. Guilty or innocent? Innocent. Like I said, it's not the it's not the guys with the multi faces. Right. It's a lizard looking one. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was the. Was he the giant or uh, the, the, the foreman or something? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Something like that. He had an actual name. I just can't remember what it was. That's what I'm, yeah, I can't. That's why I couldn't remember either because they just called they just call him the Quintazon. Yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I have a figure of that guy, thanks to Russell. Oh. Indeed. Yeah. You got the whole set. I got the whole set. I bought that off Russell earlier this year. Is that a newer thing, like the Quintesson figures? Because I never like really saw that. that yeah, that, that, yeah. Will, that was an exclusive to some type of convention, yeah. wasn't it, Russell? Yep. Yeah, sure was. Yeah, I love that. That's, I've got that displayed with pride in my. In my no own. one loves Quintessons more than Justin, so <laughs> that's true. It was destined for him to have it. Uh, uh, yeah, and I, I was gonna say, I think toy technology has caught up with Transformers because, like, I got that Prow and Ironhide, and like, 
you know, they transform and everything. I'm just, I was looking, I was like, man, these, there's a lot more steps to transform these. I remember as a kid, I like, I would try to transform them without looking the in, at the instructions. But yeah, they're, they're no, a lot more yeah. complex now transforming them. It's like, oh, oh yeah. It's like swing the oh, hip yeah, around. True. And yeah, it's just <laughs> before it was basically just like pushing the arms and like, you know, put the legs in and stuff. Yeah. But now, Do you guys first, remember your, oh, go ahead, Russell. Just saying, now they have an Optimus Prime that transforms itself. So, <laughs> oh, what what do you do? Just press a button and it yep. it's yeah. unlocks the mm-hmm. Okay. Do you guys remember what your first Transformer toy was? Your very first one. Yes. Um, I don't. I don't. I was gonna say I don't remember my very first one. It might have been Bumblebee, but again, I'm the old school. I was like in early '80s. So right. I was there in the beginning. It's like. I remember my Bumblebee off the off the metal Optimus Prime. You could kill a you yes. kill a bitch with. Yeah, <laughs> I, I literally dropped him out of a second story window. Nothing, no, no damage. <laughs> Maybe a scratch, but no dan no no damage. Yeah, barely a scratch. That's what they yeah. made him the last. Yeah, sound wave. I had a sound wave and blaster. Yeah, my uh, my first that I remember. Uh, uh, obviously, no surprise here. They were Beast Wars. They weren't. Oh uh, yes, G1. yes, G one. But uh, it was uh, a character called Nocturo, who wasn't even in the cartoon. But oh, uh, was it, wasn't he, that a bat? It was a bat and a bull. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, because this was when they were doing the um, the hybrids, like the uh, oh. the, the fusors, is what they oh, called them. Oh, okay. I love that. And uh, but other than him, I also had uh, Optimus Primal. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, those are the first two I remember having. So what was your first, Justin? Because you're old like mine, me. Mine was the, the very first Ratchet. Oh, wow. oh, which, and he which, really didn't which, have like legs and stuff. Yeah, uh, he didn't have legs, <laughs> and he had that weird like uh, like platform thing with the cannon on it that like was supposed to shoot projectiles out but never did, and that that was also <laughs> solid metal. And I remember throwing that at a friend that I was oh. mad at. Oh man. <laughs> How long were it they might, in the ER it, after? Well, in my defense, they threw something at me first. So, oh, okay. You know, this is, yeah, yeah. That's the salt with a deadly weapon. Yeah, I know, yeah. Well, I was mad. Yeah. I mean, back back. <laughs> I mean, back when that I. Makes it okay. <laughs> Back when Justin and I were kids, I mean, you had it was a feast. I mean, not not at, nowhere near as good as Transformers. We had GoBots, uh, mm, GoBots. Those were ca- cast iron metal too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I bet there were a lot of uh, ambulance ER trips due to GoBots. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's like the whole the whole myth, not, not the myth, but the whole thing about the rocket firing Boba Fett that never actually oh yes came out all because. Some kid shot a Battlestar Galactica toy into their throat and choked on a oh, missile. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was it. That was the end yep. of that. Yeah. Well, it's a way to weed out the we weeded out the week in the eighties, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Darwinism in full effect. Exactly. Don't, for God's sake, don't put stinkor in your mouth. Damn it! <laughs> so that chicken. <laughs> Stink or, oh my god, the slime pit. I, oh. Oh, the slime man. pit. Oh, yes. yeah, he, that was the best. I oh. remember in the 90s, there was like a Spider Man equivalent uh, for the 90s cartoon, something to do with slime. And we brought that home, and it immediately got on my mom's carpet, and I oh. never saw that thing again. I <laughs> never saw it again. I'm trying to stain the carpet. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember. Didn't they have on the slime for the Masters of the Universe slime pit? Justin, wasn't it? I think it even says, "Yeah, don't, don't, don't come in contact with like carpet or yes, you know, not or, use on yeah, carpet." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And of course, nobody paid attention. No, to that they're, like, they're like, "Here's our warning, so we don't get sued." I asked over the no, exactly. no carpet fabric. That oh, slime's only meant spirits. for trap jaw. That's, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was gonna say, who did it? What? What Sp- Spider Man version? I'm like, what was that? Was that that greasy hobgoblin? Is that what? You're, is that oh, what that was for? No, it was oh. some kind of playset. It was. Oh. Uh, I I don't even remember. What it was, but yeah, there was some kind of slime in it, and Mom wasn't happy. Oh, that's so funny! That, that greasy hobgoblin, gobble gobble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but 
like I said, just a real brief appearance in Void Rivals for you. Shock, shock, look at Shockwave. Nice. Shockwave. That's some good art, art right there. Yeah. yeah cause I think, yeah. I think I saw it. I don't know if it was a uh, variant cover or maybe it might have been a second printing, but yeah, I think there was like a Shockwave cover. Mm, nice. So I, I, cause I did see that there was like a, I don't know if it was a second printing. There's like a, there's a jet fire cover for issue one and stuff. Yeah. I'm oh, surprised there's, there's a ton, ton of variant covers. I'm surprised there's not like a, a an homage to the what was it Transformers Must Die or Autobots Must Die that classic oh, oh yeah. Cover. No, yeah yeah that, that was, yeah yeah that was number five on the Marvel one yeah I mean we might get something like that I don't yeah. know are, I don't know but you think they're just like yeah let's not let's not call back to the Transformers let's not to the Marvel stuff they're calling more back to the cartoon than anything that's true yeah, yeah. but again I mean I, I think more people know the cartoon probably of course like, yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah all right so we want to get to Transformers number one we yeah. do yeah, yes definitely. all right so what you guys think uh well we get we get a version of Spike and his father in here uh yeah mm-hmm <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I have never uh, particularly cared for the Witwicky family <laughs> <laughs> throughout all media, especially Shia LaBeouf. Um, um, yeah. But um, true, I was actually uh, I was invested in them in this story because guess what? It's something way more realistic and more, uh, I guess, soap opera. You know. It's, it's it's better written for one. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Spike and Sparky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the like the bum like the Bumblebee movie and like this the, the Beast War this latest uh, Rise of the Beast one. I mean, they're all right, but most of the live action Transformers, I'm just like, uh oh, not good. Especially, <laughs> yeah. especially if it's Shia LaBeouf, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was so bad. But yeah, well, I mean, I mean, in this version, I guess uh, so. Spike had a brother, uh, what Jimmy, who he was an astronaut who died. I was, wa- mm-hmm. I, I was waiting for him to say, "Oh, your brother Buster." <laughs> oh, Buster! <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised they didn't do something like your brother went off to the military and his name was Duke. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh oh oh. Your older brother. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, and then uh, yes, he has a friend carly which i, I believe mm-hmm. that was like oh yeah so that's an awesome band does anybody know how old spike was supposed to be in that original cartoon because I, I i saw <laughs> I, I was reading an article re- recently and they were talking about that original cartoon and they, you know i don't know if they were like telling people about who aren't too familiar they're like oh yeah spike who was like 14 years old they're saying you know 14 see, see, that's what i was saying i thought he was older than that but they were like yeah it seemed like he was like 14 and meanwhile he was like working with his dad on a, like a like an oil rig or something which is on probably an oil rig. Highly, 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 highly 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 labor highly illegal yeah well they were wearing hard hats half the time yeah <laughs> Yeah, well, I gathered from this comic that he was like seventeen or eighteen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. this. One, That's yeah. what I thought too. Like yeah. right, right out of high school. Yeah, because yeah. he's t- he's talking about yeah, going yeah, training to be an astronaut and stuff. Now, Carly was she in the cartoon? F you, I think. I uh, I know there was a girl. Maybe but later was, on. Was that the same? The Megan Fox character was her name Carly, or was that? I don't think. No. Oh, I don't, okay, I don't think so and was Shia right. LaBeouf even Spike? I didn't think he was Spike. I no, he was, he yeah. was Sam Witwicky. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Sam. Yeah. Sam. But Carly has an awesome van. Oh she did, hell she yeah! Did, <laughs> she did the art. <laughs> she did the art herself, which I love. Yeah. That is the most eighties awesome yeah. van I have it ever is. seen. It is. You got this. You got like the full D and D crew on it. I was gonna, I was gonna say it looks like some yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. I can see Justin hanging in his head or uh, <laughs> head out the window. Yeah, I play D and D. Suck it. <laughs> Absolutely. This was back before it was cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I would but, ride with Carly any day. Yeah, the 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 barbarian guy it looks like the perfect uh, combination between Conan and He Man. So totally, totally. My favorite biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Justin is He Man a biscuit? <laughs> you know, yeah. Well, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Probably not the '80s one with that bowl cut or whatever. But <laughs> not with the bowl cut. No, no. but the, but the the Dolph Lundgren 
Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. man. Dolph Lundgren and the, the early animated one from the early 2000s. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. That's an animated biscuit, if there's ever one. Oh, yeah. my. Cock a doodle doo. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I like. <laughs> I like our a little. I like, you know, the, the trouble with Transformers is like uh, the human part. It's yeah. kind of like the same problem with like a Godzilla movie or right. You have to have interesting humans, or what's the point? You're just mm-hmm. if you're just waiting for the next fight, it's not really about a movie at that point or mm-hmm. a comic or anything. It's just it's just mindless entertainment. So you have to have the human hook, and I think they successfully give a good human hook here. Is it a little overplayed, like the alcoholic dad who lost their one of their kids and they're burdening down the other one? Yeah, it's a little played out, but not really in Transformers, it's not. Right. Yeah, I know. Right. We've seen that a lot in other media and other types of stories, but not right. necessarily in the framework of a Transformers story. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so they, uh, yeah, Spike and uh, Carly go... Uh, stargazing and fall fall i guess through a hole in this uh <laughs> or on the side of this cliff and oh what's that i'm sorry if i may, if i took that fall i wouldn't be getting up yeah, uh, yeah. The, there would be lots of broken bones oh! <laughs> if it didn't kill you you'd want to be dead after that fall kill me i'm right here I'll do it kill now. me somebody kill me you gotta rub that one but in. this are this <laughs> <laughs> this artwork is gorgeous oh, when they first oh, yeah, show the, yeah. the back of the spaceship oh. and and then the next page um when they find the the transformers inside all dead and bashed up it's so good they just had an orgy oh my <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, looks like it didn't end see, very well. Oh, 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 hold on, Justin. You know he's he's gonna fit in that tailpipe joke like we were talking about before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My tailpipe's bigger than Megatron's for sure. Oh. <laughs> 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 So so yeah so and then uh, Jet, uh, Jetfire comes flying in straight from Void Rivals number one uh, mm-hmm. basically again and I think this is the first time we've seen this in comics this is straight from the cartoon Teletran one yep, mm, yep. Teletran one yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. love that callback yep and we start they start to wake up and well, yeah, <laughs> it well, takes a turn well yeah. <laughs> well the fir- well the first one who wakes up the king of petty himself starscream <laughs> <laughs> what luck is that yeah. starscream is the first one yeah <laughs> yeah uh, uh, you know Je- uh, i guess uh, i guess him and jetfire were friends or comrades uh well, that's from the cartoon yeah. too, because when Jetfire oh, right. when Jetfire sh- first shows up, he's like, "Oh, I used to be friends with Starscream, so he must be the good guy. So mm-hmm. I'll be a Decepticon." And then okay. throughout his first appearance, he's like, "Oh, this these are the bad guys." <laughs> <laughs> Imagine thinking Starscream was the good guy. <laughs> I know that's there's naive, and then there's that. <laughs> If, if Starscream's the good guy, I don't want to meet the villain. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, there are worse things out there in the universe that we know about. Well, um, yeah. Don't you say his name! <laughs> I won't! I won't do it! Oh, uh, So, yeah, okay, yeah, big spoilers, kids. I mean, the first thing Starscream does is he basically blows off Bumblebee's head. Yeah. Yeah, there goes that Bumblebee. That was surprising. Yeah. But once again, the robots, really I mean, again, eventually we might, you know... Well, yeah, it's, I mean, the, right. or or yeah, less, or less, we just jump to like, oh, hey, we rebuilt him. He's Goldbug now. <laughs> He's oh, Goldbug. God. Yeah, they might do that. Yeah, but I remember when because the, they were doing that thing where every day they were revealing who was on the teams. Yeah, and everybody was like, well, that's Bumblebee. That's got to be Bumblebee, and it's it's Cliff, Cliff Jumper. Jumper. Yeah. So oh, why yeah. isn't Bumblebee on the team? Well, he did. <laughs> he <Yeah>. did. <laughs> 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 That's not Bumblebee. That's Bumblebee's dead. Bumblebee's dead. 
That's no, going to be a drop, isn't it? <laughs> no, what? No, it, it just reminded me last night, Lil, that I were re- re- reviewing the Crow. Does anyone remember the Crow? Mm, the crow yeah. movie? Oh yeah. I'm yeah. not skank, skank dead. That's all me. That's skank dead, skank dead. <laughs> Watch out for those Joker nuggets. Oh. <laughs> uh, Where's the Joker nuggets? <laughs> <laughs> so then uh well i guess uh yeah star scream basically attacks jet fire but teletrain mm. is able to bring back optimus which as russell pointed out i mean look at these wrestling moves man he's in the old clothesline <clears throat> and he's yeah, in the old suplex Su- suplex yes. oh the, okay. it is a uh, german suplex um it's yeah, and you could even, like, I'm going to get real nerdy here. The way that he grabs him from behind and twists him into the clothesline, that would be called a Rainmaker clothesline. Ooh, okay. Um, yeah, this, that's, I can feel like this is going to be a running theme on every episode is, Ooh. hey, Russell, what's this move called? Well, <laughs> 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 <Nerd! laughs> Oh yeah, and then he grabbed Starscream, gave him the German suplex. Oh yeah, and then Optimus. I love his reaction when he sees uh, Spike and Carly for the first time. He's like, "What the fuck are you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's never seen humans before. I know, no. but at least like, yeah, Starscream opens fire. He's like, "Get behind me, small creatures!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. And okay, it, it, you had to have read this in Peter Cullen's voice. Oh right? yeah, oh that's absolutely. Just, that's just yes. Optimus Prime. I mean, espe- espe- yeah. especially this Optimus Prime and Starscream. You know, you read them mm-hmm. in the voices. Yeah. Starscream too, yeah, yeah and yeah. Ratchet, yeah. and Ratchet as well. R- right? Ratchet right. gets to come in with another kind of wrestling move: the, the big boot, yeah, the, the big boot, right the to big the boot, the, yeah, right to the side of the head. Yeah, I man, I love how daniel warren johnson like his anatomy on these like these wrestling moves it just looks so painful yes. like star screams the whole shoulder sunken in and he's like ah! <laughs> his whole body is twisted and contorted yeah. <laughs> yeah and the onomatopoeia says katong katong yeah <laughs> oh i know the sound effects on this are great too yeah, the lettering is top notch in this as well. Oh, I should man. mention that all the all the robotic speak it looks really cool. It all the all the sound effects like kind of look almost like they're spray painted on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I it, it's really striking the whole throughout the whole issue. Oh, okay, attention. okay, yeah. Then we get Skywarp and Soundwave. You know, you read Soundwave in the voice. Oh, you yeah. know that. Yes, oh, yeah. Soundwave totally. Yes. So uh, there's Skywarp. Did uh, Thundercracker not get the call? Did he not? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying oh, to remember when they, he... when when they were showing those things like, oh, who's on the team and those uh, ads. I I don't think we got all three of them, did we? I thought it was yeah, just, was it just Star so, and Skywarp. Yeah. yeah, he must have been one of the ones that was left behind. Yeah, there's, there's got to be a reason that he would want to do two of the Seekers um, over like a different Decepticon. I don't know, but it. I mean, anybody that knows anything about Transformers know that Starscream, Thundercracker, and Skywarp are the exact same toy, just painted differently. <laughs> yes. Um, right. <laughs> well, there are a lot of those, too. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least until we t- turn, uh, what was it? Is it Skywarp into Cyclonus. Oh, yeah. Oh, Do you, oh my God. There, there's a, I get at least one face Transformers staff. Uh, uh, group on Facebook where people are just like, oh, it's it was Skywarp. It was changing the Cyclonus. No, it was uh, oh, which Insecticon was oh, it? it was Bombshell. Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah. who was transformed? Was it was it Skywarp or was it Bombshell of the Insecticons? It's- <laughs> well, that's like how um, in that same group, obviously they made Scourge, and then they had the exact the, same the sweeps the sweeps, the sweeps yeah. which yeah. were the same thing as scourge yeah they were like mini scourges <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's that was one of the arguments they're like well it's, it's like of course bombshell's got to be the uh scourge because then they just turn the other insecticons into the sweeps you know <laughs> yeah sweeps yeah 
What a waste of Insecticons. No, oh, mm-hmm. and then yeah. like you know the whole de- then there's another debate. It's like were they dead when the Unicron transformed them? Were they not dead? Do they remember who they were? Do they not? Yeah, you know? right. Oh, my. Mm. Well, it's, it definitely seems like Galvatron remembered who he was. Oh yeah. But- um, yeah. all, all, although he he kind of went to even more baddie after he got turned. Oh into yeah, Galvatron. maybe that was part of the reason he went crazy. That's why I love him. I I mean I love Galvatron's design, uh, just like the purple crown and everything. But also, yeah. Leonard Nimoy is fantastic as that character. I it makes me so upset that when they did it in the show, it was back to being Frank Welker. Yeah. Nothing against Frank Welker. Right I now. love him, but it's not the same. Um, yeah. yeah, but they're not play, paying Leonard Nimoy money for a whole no, you know, every episode. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah. But he'll do however many episodes of In Search of, that's for sure. Well, <laughs> um, I guess they they ponied up, I guess, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to this comic. Yes, no, Nimoy. We see Ravage uh, yeah, doing what he does oh, best yeah. and ravaging the hell out of Optimus Prime. But it seems like he's killed too. Um, yeah, I was upset about that. I said, no, not Ravage. Don't but worry, in Beast, Wars, he'll come, in Beast Wars, he'll come back as a Russian agent. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Lord. <laughs> anyway. Oh, wait, but, well, because well, Prime's covering Ratchet while Ratchet's, like, loading up his trailer with, like, the wounded, like, the yeah. auto. But no, look, on this page, isn't that uh, Thundercracker getting reassembled? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. So he didn't get okay. a lot to do this episode, but yeah, or this issue, but yeah, it looks like he's getting uh, you're right reassembled there. So we will see him okay. unless he's dying right there. And then, uh, but oh wait, and then next to uh, Thundercracker, there isn't that one of the um, what's the what's the name of the the, the three that turn into like a the camera Devastator? No, oh, no. no, no, no. Um, oh. oh, I forget their name. Uh, the camera. Oh. Yeah, I can't remember the camera's name. Because I don't. I mean, they really weren't on the cart. They might have been like one ish, one episode or two of the cartoon. But uh, oh, I just yeah, saw. Yeah. I saw there. I uh, just saw a post the other day about the the toy. Hmm. Let's see. You guys go ahead. I'll do a quick Google search here. That's what I was doing. Uh, oh. Oh, is it Refractor? That's it. Yeah. It has to be. Oh, Refractor. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Or reflector? It might be. Oh, it's both. Apparently, it's both. Oh, it's oh, a, wasn't there, oh, there was it, a bad it, one and a, there was an Autobot and a Decepticon. Oh, I thought it was gonna. I thought it was gonna be the whole Jetfire Skyfire debate. Okay, <laughs> right. Apparently, oh, on the Transformers wiki, it lists both reflector and refractor as names. So, okay, that's it. There we go. <laughs> so we're gonna see one of them. Somebody's, Somebody's gonna be is. taking some pictures. Yeah, but we kind of skipped over Optimus dealing with Bumblebee's death and how horrific oh, that was. That's true. Yeah, he picks up, he cradles the body, and Bumblebee. Spike Spike sees this, which is, I mean, because that's in the cartoon. That's Spike's best buddy is Bumblebee, so it's mm-hmm. it's kind of ironic that he's witnessing Bumblebee's lifeless corpse right yeah oh you know what i kind of miss this you didn't know what i think happened here i think uh when prime shoots out teletran one to stop uh more decepticons i think he i think he stops it when thundercrackers in mid uh oh okay reach yeah because so, yeah they see his head hit the floor again and starscream freaking out so you're probably not going to see thundercracker well maybe not right away <laughs> um i I bet they're going to fix Teletran and get some more Transformers in in, in the later on issues of the series. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. way they're going to bring in more Transformers. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think they should overdo it. We don't need no. yeah. 40 Transformers no. to keep track no. of. Certainly um, not. It, well, it think... was smart of them to start this out with a small amount of characters. Yeah. So. C- yeah. Keep it small at first. Because, like, I, like, the 80s, like the Marvel comic, I think they were kind of, they felt beholden to, like, Every time a new toy was introduced, they yeah, were like yeah. introducing new ones. Yeah. And then IDW, it seems like, like I said, I've oh just I've just sampled, but they went nuts. There were so many trains. A million of yeah. them. Yeah. Mm. This art of Optimus blowing up Teletran One is so cool. Oh though. yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that just him blasting away with that cannon. I and love then. It. Ratchet <laughs> holding the door for Optimus. Optimus, we're loaded up, and then he's like, "Whoa!" And Optimus is doing that action hero, yeah, run. yeah, yeah. yeah. With cradling the two kids. Yeah, oh, it's so good. 
Yeah. And he and finally he, he says our iconic line. You got it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> roll out. Yes. Oh, I love Red that panel form, so much. Roll out. Ratchet and Optimus together. It's so good. Um, Jetfire gets messed up big time by Starscream in a dogfight. And that art mm. is also incredible. Yes. Um, yeah, I love that. But the other Decepticons are complaining because they're like, dude, we're almost out of Energon. We can't be doing all this stuff. <laughs> Just slow down. And Starscream is... He's being hot-headed and stubborn. He doesn't want to listen. That's oh, a, yeah. And then we kind of get a hint at the big question mm-hmm. everyone had because Soundwave's like, the harvest thing is up to you. It's what Meg... He's like, do not say their name! <laughs> yeah. I am leader of the Decepticons now. Also, Jetfire dies. Well, he ceases functioning. Mm. Oh, it's the same thing, Phil. I know, come I know on but now. again... again, But he ro- might come back. They're robots. Like, they like can bring Bumblebee. him back. Like yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe they'll find a way to bring him back. This ending, though, uh, wasn't quite expecting this. Oh, well, Starscream! Yeah, Starscream attacks the the place where um, the dad works. Mm-hmm. The power plant where the dad works, and his friend and Dave. <laughs> his friend Dave, who was trying to have a heart to heart with him a couple of minutes beforehand, all of a sudden gets grabbed by uh, <laughs> Starscream and crushed to death. And that's how the issue ends. This, this is one of my, this, I don't know if you, that is one of my favorites. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. So fragile. And then, so fragile, so squishy, so the, pathetic. <laughs> so oh, God. It's so good. That could have been lifted from one of those classic Marvel comics. From mm-hmm. the it's so good. We should all, the next page is all about the letters. We should all send in a letter about this <gasps> issue. Yes. We should. Yes. We should do that. You know what? Yeah. I, you know what? I did like. Uh, yes, kids. I did email Daniel Warren Johnson to see if he would join us again. Of course, he's busy. So, mm-hmm. oh well, actually, yeah. yeah. After a while, I did send him another one. I'm like, the door's open. I'm like, anytime you want to talk about a new issue comes out, you know, just let us know. Yeah, but maybe I have in the future. We can I have to ask him so many wrestling. Questions. I was gonna say. I was. Gonna, uh, oh yeah. yeah. I, I know. If nothing else, Russell's gonna be like, yes, yes. <laughs> we can be kindred spirits. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe sometime in the future he'll join us. That would be great. Yeah, right. I, mean, I mean, it looks like he looks like he may be around our age. Just thinks he's talking about all those old Transformers toys and stuff. Mm. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, very cool. Yeah. So, what are our thoughts overall on the issue? Oh, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Bring, give me more. Hundred yeah. percent in. Hundred percent in. Yes. It's yep. it's it's like a more mature still not like overtly mature i think a a young like a young adult could get into this i don't know if it's for kids because there's <laughs> so the guy gets crushed to death at the yeah. end yeah right yeah What's but like, it's rated it's I rated t for teens time, was, yeah i was happy it wasn't too dark yeah like when i saw that it was going to be an image book that was my only concern i didn't want it to be too dark and too bloody and too over the top with the heavy screen stuff like yeah yeah well image has come a long way since the 90s so oh absolutely but yeah, um fun. yeah I, I i it's a very it's a it's a great like modern take on specifically the cartoon mm-hmm. yes um which is something that most of the comics didn't really do of course they take stuff from the cartoon but most of the comics were their absolute own thing or mm-hmm. the marvel comic was like a it was an alternate take on the cartoons events where this is basically the eighties cartoon, but more, uh, adult. A retelling. Yeah. 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 I mean, I wonder, I wonder which, which way, uh, Daniel Warren Johnson is going to take, because again, it's like in the cart eighties cartoon, it was basically like the humans were always like, Oh, the Decepticons are attacking. Let's call the, the Autobots do Teletran one. The Marvel comic humans were just like, oh, the, all robots are bad. We must destroy them. We'll try to destroy bad. them all. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wanted to point something out. Uh, go back to the cover here. <laughs> Which one? I think there was like twenty covers. Well, the oh. <laughs> the the main cover with Optimus yeah. and like this. That He's one? got okay. two different Autobot symbols on him. Oh. Oh, I didn't notice that, Russell. I don't know if that has meaning or what, but they are different. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't notice hmm. that. Huh. I didn't notice that at all. That's cool. Or unless maybe one's like a rank or something. No, maybe. Maybe oh. that's the, the symbol of the, the prime. The prime. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I didn't catch that. Good catch, Russell. I didn't see that. How much ass did Optimus what? Prime kick in this? Uh, oh I said God. kick. Yeah. Kick. Yeah, I know. How I much know. did he kick in this issue? It's so just... much. Yeah, I love it. Well, I get... wasn't happy about Ravage getting blown up, but I, I loved everything else. <laughs> no, we, we still got laser beak, though, so. <laughs> we do. We do. Rob and Wolf. I guess Rob Wolf Frenzy. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. Oh, that's true. <laughs> rat bat. Oh yeah, uh, if we want to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, rat bat. See rat bat. Yeah. So I, I guess you know we all said we're all in. Um, I feel like this can do what the IDW Turtles series did, where it kind of takes from every mm. every version of the characters and makes something yeah. new out of it. Make something new and accessible. And so I'm. I, I'm wondering where you guys think we're going from here. Do we think we're just going to, like, it's going to be like season one of the cartoon, or are, you, or are they just going to go in their own direction? Eh, maybe, like, a little both. Maybe, like, in the spirit of season one, but kind of their own thing. Right. Mm. And we got to know yeah. how they're eventually going to tie in G.I. Joe, because right. that's coming. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. well, that Duke miniseries, I believe it said something. And it's like, yeah, no one believes him. And they got attacked by this alien plane, which, again, is probably going to be Starscream <laughs> or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, need... I- the, I need the team up between Starscream and Cobra Commander for sure. Oh, yeah. oh it has yeah. to happen. <laughs> the, the dual voices, yeah. Yes. Cobra! <laughs> you sound familiar. <laughs> I think it's yeah, interesting... I, oh, go ahead, Justin. I've cut you no, off twice now. No, that's okay. No, I was just going to say, I can see them um, doing a crossover with the G.I. Joe title because this is going to be an ongoing series, right? This isn't a mini series. The Transformers, I'm pretty sure it's an ongoing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. see them doing a, a crossover pretty soon here, like within the first six, seven, eight issues, maybe. Well, well, that's like what we and Russell were kind of talking about before you jumped on. It's like, like the Duke and Cobra Commander. I think those are mini series. But it's like, uh, of course, Larry Hall is doing more GI Joe. We're like, does that tie in? Mm. Because they're, you know, they're picking up right at three hundred one, where he left off at three hundred. So I'm just like, is that going to tie in, or is that going to be? I figure that's just going to be its own thing. Mm. Mm. Um, Although yeah. Transformers have been in the GI Joe comic before. I that's mean, true. towards the end that's of the true. Marvel run, they did it. So I mean, there's precedent yeah. for they're in the same universe. So yeah, that's when they transform Megatron into a tank. They rebuild him as a tank. Right. I I'm excited to see where we go from here. Yes. Um me too. I'm happy this is an ongoing. I'm and sorry. I also I think it's interesting that they're kicking off G.I. Joe with two minis yeah. that mm-hmm. are from the point of view of your main hero and your main villain. Yeah. That's um, cool. Yeah. I, I would I would almost expect them to kind of do something similar because you know, it's like Megatron's not here, so Mm-hmm. What if they didn't do? What if we just got Serpentor, or we've got Destro oh, yeah. in charge? You know, oh, right. but or Doctor Mindbender. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love him. He's got the best mustache. <laughs> uh, that monocle means business. Mm-hmm. I am partial to the Hard Master. No, oh, but <laughs> oh, 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 there's a drop for that. <laughs> The hard master. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do really like um, Croc Master. I love him. Uh, he's doesn't get to do much, but he oh, comes with yeah. a freaking crocodile. So yeah, we need to see more of Croc Master. Yeah, and he's I got mean, a great outfit too with that it, mask. And I mean, you know, there's no chance in hell they're not using snake eyes. Come on. Oh yeah. I'm surprised mm-hmm. that wasn't the first thing out the gate. Me you too. Know? Yeah. yeah. Right. One of the first miniseries, yeah. Well, you know, he'll be in the first issue of the G.I. Joe ongoing. He's I'm sure, be- yeah. Yeah. Oh, and again, I mean, this call, call back to any classic comics, not even just Transformers or G.I. Joe. Keep the, that, that corner box looking thing, uh, you know, on all the covers. Because yes. it looks like on the yeah. previews for the G.I. Joe, they're doing that too, so. I love it. 
I love corner boxes on comics. Me too. Me too. It's classic. Gotcha. Uh, well, well, I was going to say, are we, give, are we uh, having ratings here? Yeah, rating what would we system? give this for a rating system? Oh, how many Energon cubes? Energon oh, cubes. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I'm saying five out of five Energon cubes. Me too. Oh, yeah, me too. Full tank. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. Full tank. Yeah. Yeah, we're unanimous. I I loved it. I thought it was a great beginning to the series. It was nostalgic without being sent overly sentimental, and it was mm. and it was a nice fresh retelling of of a story that we all know. Yeah, but it was enough to be entertaining and gripping, and made me want to see what happens next. Yeah, we knew it wasn't going to be overly sentimental when Bumblebee got his face blown off. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I I hope we get like an in-universe explanation why Teletran rebuilt Soundwave as 1980s technology while it's mm. 2023. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, see, at first uh, with the van, I thought it was going to be the 80s. I thought, oh, well, I, but, I guess mm. it could be because I mean they really don't say they don't really, either way. Yeah, right? they don't put a timestamp on this. Yeah, so it could. Yeah. But with everything tying together, then the G.I. Joe would have to be 1980s, too. Right. True. That's I true. mean, unless yeah. this is like a flash, but this first issue Transformers is a flashback or something. Mm. Mm. There's lots of different ways they could take it, I guess, yeah. Unless we're going to keep it vague and just, you know, they're not going to Not put a, a, year, a year, date yeah. on it. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of like it when, when they do that, when they yeah. leave it open like that. Kind of like Batman the Animated Series where they just leave it, uh, you know. Mm, you, yeah, mm-hmm. it could be the 40s, it could be the 90s, it could be in the future. So we're going to take a bet right now. How long before, how, how many years or arcs, how long is it going to take before we get our first mention of uh, Unicron? Oh, hmm. I, I I bet they're going to wait until maybe the second year of this time. At least, I'd say, because you know what, I, I know yeah. what I'm betting. I'm betting by the end of the first year... <laughs> That's when Megatron shows up. The end of the first, around the mm-hmm. end of the first year, there will be like a big event yeah. or something. Yeah, some yeah. big climactic story. Yeah, yeah. It would be really cool. I can see it now. Like, imagine you know, you always get the big fight with Unicron and everything, but now you could have the GI Joe in there oh, as well. True. Yeah, yeah. And also, what if Cobra has to team with them? To help save the Earth, because not even Cobra wants to destroy the Earth necessarily. <laughs> so yeah, there's no nowhere else for them to go. So they've kind of got. I can, to. I can, I can yeah, see it now. Cool. The cover yeah. image: Duke and Cobra Commander shaking hands, and Unicron yeah. looming in the background. That's yeah. it. It's Print it. Oh Print no, 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 there's yes. your co- no, your cover: Duke and Cobra Commander shaking hands, and behind them, like. Optimus Prime and either Megatron or Starscream shaking hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 I love that idea. Yeah. I, what are you? What, okay. I want to hear your all's best uh, Megatron theories. Where is he? What's happened to him? Why isn't he here? I wonder if he's on Cybertron still. Well, Phil said that Shockwave was alone on Cybertron. Oh, well, right, he, right. Said, he said the rest of them were in stasis, but I'm like, wouldn't Megatron be the one? rolling around if he was in charge or I don't know. Right. <laughs> he got ejected out of the arc like halfway through. <laughs> oh, oh. Maybe, maybe there was like a pod like with some other transformers oh. that ejected from the main ship. Well remember in the in the uh original cartoon it's like the 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 Decepticons caught up to them in their own ship. So mm-hmm. what if yeah. oh, what if Starscream betrayed him and like try, kind of tried to leave him adrift in space? So when Megatron comes back, he's not he's not gonna be he's gonna be less happy with Starscream than usual. Or if they remove the airlock, if they really want to be bold, do you remember what happened the last time Starscream threw Megatron up an airlock? He came back as Galvatron. Is that you? Mm. Here's a hint. <laughs> Ooh. You think they'll do that? Have Galvatron come in instead of Megatron? It, it would. I don't know. Probably not. But I mean, unless they want to ki- unless they want to kill two birds with one stone, and uh, yes, he comes back as Galvatron, and that's when we introduce Unicron. Right. Oh, right. Right. I. I. I I'm. I'm going to my theory. I don't really. I don't have a theory about where he is or anything, but. I I'm going to say we see Megatron by the end of like the first arc here. Oh, oh okay. 
I'm saying the first okay. year. I'm saying we get a year in, and then we get Megatron. We might. Oh, oh what if we get a Decepticon Civil War? Like Decepticons mm-hmm. are taking Ooh. sides between Starscream yeah, yeah. or Star Megatron. Yeah. Megatron. Yeah, 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 that would be cool. That'd be really cool. Just look up in the sky. Is is that a train? It's an astro train. It's an astro train. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and will we see any Quintessons in this series? I'm interested. In well, that. they showed up in Void. Well, that one showed up in Void Rivals, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're out there, for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Are we going to see any of Mr. Ball, Wink, Grawl, Wink, Ninny Ball? <laughs> <laughs> the junkie on. Yeah. Oh, that's the thing. We could see some of those, that line of Transformers, like Ultra Magnus, Hot Rod, because, I mean, that mm-hmm. image where they they were showing which, I mean, RC's on that image. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. all of them. She wasn't all in that first issue, though. Yeah. No, I mean we'll look Ratchet, Wheeljack, and Cliff Jumper, and all of a sudden that. So mm-hmm. I, um, I'm hoping we eventually get one. My f- my second favorite Autobot is uh, Cup. Cup. Uh, Cup. Uh, Cup. Yeah. Yes, he's great. I'm really surprised they didn't do like Ironhide, like a big Bruiser mm. character, oh. but um. Or Grimlock. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that RC's on the team because there's not a whole lot of female Transformers. I mean, That's true. I mean, yeah. counting Prime, there's only like five of them in that image. So it's like, do you think they're going to st- stick with a team of five, or are they going to add some more? Maybe or? for a little while. Yeah, yeah, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I think they should keep it small for a little yeah. while, and then gradually add some new characters. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Not too small. Whoa! <laughs> Transform and roll out! <laughs> Oh, wait, there's a drop for that, too. <laughs> Roll out. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So, any other thoughts on this thing? Uh, I'm just excited. Uh, uh, so, this is a once a month book, right? Yeah, because, yeah, the issue two comes out November 8th. So. When's that first G.I. Joe book coming out? Uh, Duke comes out December 27th. That's my birthday. Oh, oh wow. nice. <laughs> Happy birthday to Russell. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> Cobra Commander comes out January 16th. So. Ooh, I'm oh, really man. excited about that. Oh, man. There's going to be some good stuff coming up. Oh, this. and then the Larry Hallman G.I. Joe comes out November 15th. So, and I, There's just no way I can catch up on all that. So I that's going to be a no <laughs> for me. I know. That's uh, what I was thinking. I was like, I'm willing to jump on. But I'm like, I, I mean, I, I got some of the pre, some of the ones not from like right before 300. but Right. Yeah, and that's going to be image as well. So how I wonder how they're going to reconcile the whole numbering thing, the Marvel stuff. Well, they already did that. Well, yeah, IDW. yeah, yeah, oh, they did. Yeah, okay. yeah, when it went to IDW, they just continued the uh, at least oh, that did. series. Okay. They continued the Marvel numbering. Yes, yeah, so that's why. That's what I'm saying. That uh, IDW went to 300. I think this one, it's, they're going to start up at 301. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my word! That's just so much. I can't. Well, that's what I told. That's what I told Russell. I said I want to. I want to interview with Larry Hallman. One of the big questions is going to be Transformers. I mean, GI Joe is awesome, but why GI? You know, why GI Joe for like? Why are you so attached years? to this? Yeah, three three hundred issues of it. Yeah. No matter that's where it goes, it's been at least three different companies, and you're still attached to it. Yeah. Um, he just can't get enough of that hard master. Oh, yeah, you know. well, who can? The hard master. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting times to be a pimp. <laughs> uh, oh, and of course, yeah, Void Rivals number five comes out October twenty fifth. So. Void Rivals, and that that's just a mini series, right? I don't know. Um, or is that an ongoing one? That might be an ongoing. Well, that's that's the one oh. written by Robert Kirkman, so. Mm-hmm. They probably told him do okay. whatever you want. <laughs> I see. Okay. I, I think, thought that was just a mini series. Yeah, I think he's the he's wrong. he's the main man in charge of this whole thing. So it's probably mm. yeah. yeah. I'm really surprised he they did it that way. I thought for sure he was going to be writing Transformers, but no, they maybe he wanted to do an original something. Yeah. 
Yeah, but have Transformers in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Oh, there's the there's the different cover to number four with there, Shockwave oh, on it. Yeah, ooh, like that. I love that. Yeah. Well, okay. That's here's great. here's another idea. What if Megatron makes his first appearance in Void Rivals? That's oh yeah. If he if he's sleeping yeah, on if Cybertron that's going to keep going for a while, he could show up there first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, what if that's the thing? If they want to, when they were taken off to chase the Autobots from Cybertron, if like Starscream just like basically, I don't know, like blasting him or something. So he's like, yeah, you're not getting on this ship. You know, yeah, yeah. St- stay here and run out of energy. Boom, bye. Shot him in the back of the head or something. Something, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I could see that happening. It was like the, I don't know really much about like our heroes and the void rivals, but like they come across this robot and they're like, oh, we're going to nurse you back to health. And it ends up being Megatron. <laughs> right. I mean, there is like a conspiracy thing going on in these two planets and void rivals, unless Megatron's doing something there. I don't know. As long as he tells somebody he's going to rip out their optics. Yeah. <laughs> their optics. <laughs> it's over, Prime. <laughs> I have the high ground. No. <laughs> <laughs> one shall stand, one shall fall. <laughs> stand Bush, hit it. No. <laughs> we got the time. <laughs> All right. All right, are we done? We're done. We done. All right, so yes. So we'll be back in a month, kids, to talk issue two of Transformers, more Void Rivals. Uh, yeah, we still won't have G.I. Joe by then. So. But yeah, eventually. No. We'll yeah, there. eventually we'll get there. So, all right. So, yeah. So send us your thoughts. What do you think of Transformers, of Void Rivals? What do you think of the whole Energon Universe concept? Uh, email us. Well, especially if you're uh, Daniel Warren Johnson. Email us, capes and <laughs> lunatics at gmail.com. <laughs> Or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find All Things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise, the Patreon, where you find you, you never know what you're going to find. Little Hellfire's Drunken <laughs> Rants, uh, movie reviews. Uh, for the episode for October, Lilith and I are going to rank Scream Queens, the Love famous it. Scream oh. Queens. Yeah. All right. Uh nice. So yes, yeah, so find it. So go subscribe there. Oh, join the Patreon elite like these two. Uh, say, join us in the elite, like uh, Mr. Moz Manzor, and of course we boast the Hard Master himself uh, as our one of our patrons. The Hard Master, yes. the High yeah. Priest yeah. of Kanchu. Hey, eventually we're going to be talking GI Joe. The Hard Master is going to come up, right? Hail the yes. Hard Master. Please, <laughs> he has to. The, the Hard Master is going to pop up, correct? The Hard Master. <laughs> He'll make an appearance here and there. Sex on the mind. Yes, he does. And like I said, no matter what show I'm on, no matter who I'm talking to on our team, everyone's favorite drop is Batman. My favorite character. To a T. Everyone's like, oh yeah, I know Ray loves Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your legacy, Ray. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Russell, did you hear the one time, uh, you know, Ray, Ray, Ray uh, messaged me, he's like, what the F? He's like, Finn's running around telling, he's, you know, y- you know, yelling at me, Batman's better than Moon Knight. He's like, what the, he's like, what did you do? I'm like, oh, it just has good taste. Just- I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Never mind. I, I should I'm, I shouldn't surprise I shouldn't ruin me and Lilith were talking we we're like man we should send Finn like some like a Batman toy or something for Christmas yeah. or something <laughs> that'll be worth the forty five dollar shipping I know the hundred dollar <laughs> shipping that, uh, <laughs> probably be easier to invent a teleporter <laughs> that reminds me of a uh, Moon Knight Core posted a screenshot yesterday. <laughs> from their Facebook group and it was the funniest damn thing I've seen for a while. Hold on, I gotta pull this up. I know we're on the air here. But I, I, I I saw one today where like people were comparing Moon Knight to Spawn now. Oh yeah. yeah. Listen, so this it oh. says there's a comment and on Moon Knight Core it says Was there ever a badass fight between Deadpool and Moon Knights or Spawn? Isn't like Moon Knight kind of a spawn ripoff? <laughs> and Moon oh Knight Core responded Moon Knight debuted in 1975 spawn is from the 90s and i just 
some people are so ignorant. Well, that's a, well, that's like a, a few years ago. I saw people saying, "Oh, is Deathstroke a rip off of Deadpool?" Ugh. Oh no! And it's the like, other way around. Exactly. It's yeah. like you know, Deathstroke <laughs> premiered like at least ten years before you know, like ten years before yeah. Deadpool. You know, oh, no. Slade Wilson, yeah. Wade yes. Wilson. Yes. Yeah, there's a difference there. Yeah. Oh mm. my. No. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome to Rip Offs and Big Boobs, the Rob Liefeld podcast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, it's it, what's the best part is like uh, everyone that has taken Deadpool after him has done a better job. <laughs> Absolutely, he's not even the best writer of his own creation. Yeah. The best line: the first time I talked to Fabian these Isa. Uh, Russell, I said, I said, I was like, oh, hey, everyone, it's Fabian. You know, he's the father of uh, Deadpool, uh, Deadpool. And he goes, oh, I guess that makes Rob his mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, with those, those big titties, she might be. Oh, <laughs> Captain America. Oh yeah, you can, childbearing hips. I was gonna say, uh, yeah, you see that article? You see that? You could buy that art now. That should be worth like five, ten bucks, right? Yeah. Well, he also recently drew the Sam Wilson Captain America, didn't he? Yeah, I yeah, think he did the same with the big boobs. Yeah. 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 That's his signature style. All right, I did oh. our drops. Russell, do your drops first because Justin has a ton of you know a ton of them. Well, when I'm not transforming and rolling out, you can find me on the Tomes of Evil podcast network with a smorgasbord of shows over there. Um, you can also find Justin and I on Gamma Charge, the strongest Hulk podcast there is. Welcome and uh, also Justin, the hard master Ray and our friend Sparky. Malarkey do a predator show, Predator and Prey, a Yaucha podcast. A Yaucha is a predator, if you didn't know. Um, uh, and I also just uh, recently debuted Taste the Pod of Dracula, which is uh, going through the rest of this month. Um, that's going to be a seasonal thing. So, yeah. Um, you know what? You need to fight get Noel to do like a uh, parody of that song. Be like, taste it, taste the pod, taste the pod of Dracula. I love that. That's uh, great. All yeah. right, all right. And again, the king of podcasting. You could find. Well, he'll be on uh, Energon Universe now once a month. He'll you can catch him every week on Marvel Tales with me. You can catch him the last week of every month talking that maniac Jean Paul Valley on We Are the Night, the favorite race podcast. podcast. Yes, and of course, uh, twice a month on Electric Mullet, the Superman <laughs> podcast. Yes, and again, he's on Gamma Charge. He's on uh, Predator and P Ray. Uh, but Predator and P Ray, Tomes uh, of Evil, Tomes, Tomes of, of Evil, evil. Gone the Form of Man, the Etrigan podcast is another one that Russell and I do. Well, that's so, part of the Tomes of Evil, so. right? Yeah, yeah, you can find that on there, and also the Lost Library of Legends, which uh, as two years in the making comes out. <laughs> yeah, two years in the making, and when this episode comes out, there actually might be two episodes of that. Oh, bold yeah. words. Old words. We'll see if I can make it happen. Hey, Justin, can I get that on Apple uh, Podcast? I was going to wrestle to fall out of his chair. <laughs> Russell almost fell over. Oh, that's too good. That's a good one for <laughs> Scream <laughs> at Tap 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 in my way downtown. <laughs> Giant sized man thing. Well wow. that escalated quickly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Pardon me, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Freaking no. All right, kids. Yeah, you got Transformers, you got Void Rivals, got everything this week. Thank you for joining us. Again, come back in one month. Transformers 2, Void Rivals number 5. And more, more random nonsense. 
Let's get her ready for some more power bombs and suplexes. Oh yeah! <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm gonna drop the elbow. On oh my god! <laughs> what, if, what if somebody calls like Prime the Ultimate Warrior or something? <laughs> oh, yeah. Gotta watch out for those rampaging elephants, right? Just. <laughs> 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 